Hey, how's it going? I pulled some cards and, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Almost knocked over something I really don't want to knock over. <laughs> well, he's happier than I am about it. <laughs> and he really can't even see from wherever he is. That would be my neighbor. <laughs> um, oh. He just did his howling again. I was, I just was reminded of how many times I've been watching somebody's video and they're like, oh my God, the lawnmower, the landscaper, the whatever, the construction, and I never hear it. <laughs> uh, so it occurred to me, you might not have heard that howling, but that's why I kept acting like I was hearing something, cause I did. <laughs> My neighbor, Helen. Okay, I think that's completely covered now. Uh, I don't need you there. So, I, a couple of videos ago, uh, I'm getting out of order. I gotta move that here. That's just not a safe place for that. Okay. So, uh, couple of, oh, hold on. <laughs> Please take in the ah, the signage. Oh my god, uh, this is okay. Cause it's contraption day. I'm not using the the thing that's meant, you know, for the purpose of what I'm doing there. Um, anyway, <clears throat> first things first. I I made another video before I started here. And it was long, longer than I wanted it to be. They keep going to be like an hour. And it's like, I got to cut that down because like if I'm watching something that takes over an hour on YouTube or anything else, really, I'll watch for a while and turn it off if I'm into it. But I also have had the impulse like, whoa, that's way too long. And I pretty much know like what's going to happen <laughs> when I go there. I don't know if I want to sit through a whole hour, but then... You don't have to. <laughs> you can like watch a little bit, turn it off, just like you do if you get up to go to the bathroom when you're watching something you're really into. If you, well, let's say you're not watching it on your phone, you're watching it on your big giant television monitor, and you're not going to bring that with you to the bathroom. I'm saying, <laughs> I don't even know anymore. But anyway, I made this long old thing. Oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> You might just look at it and go, oh my god, an hour. I don't want to deal with all of that. And then not watch. But like I said, you, it, it has to uh, depend on your actual level of interest in watching the thing in the first place, I guess. <clears throat> so I made it really long and I thought I got rid of it. But when, right before I started doing this, I saw that it's still there. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I wasn't happy with it. I was very all over the place. Uh, like, I couldn't nail down my focus. Like, what what do you actually want to be talking about here? And there was just too much. N not any more than usual. I just couldn't, like, nail it down and, <laughs> pardon, make it make sense. So, <clears throat> I uh, just said forget it and stopped. <laughs> And went out and tried to do some things and man things are just not what they seem and that is kind of the um one of the sort of uh subjects i want to address a little bit but before i do that i want to again refer back to uh maybe a couple of videos ago like not the last one but the one before that I had said that I heard the eight and then I heard study the eights and I didn't know what the eights were and I thought it was affiliates or, or not affiliates but like words that ended in I-A-T-E-S basically eights e eight like it, if you say it fast it sounds like yates right e eights yates yates and then after I did that, or while I was doing that, like, like it 
came to me, oh, maybe it's that. And I made like a little two column list and it was sort of like the positive words and the negative words, which was fine. And I, I kind of knew that wasn't really it. I think I even said so, because I did do it while I was filming. But then I just put it aside because it did like it wasn't the thing. And then when I was done with that one, I thought, oh, there's a poet named Yates. And then I immediately forgot about it until today, <clears throat> after I made the long video I am probably not going to put up uh, that I made before this one. I finished it and I thought, oh, you know, maybe it is that Yates. William but Butler Yates poet and literary figure from Ireland and he uh, he started putting out like well I guess he was born in the 1800s so in the late 1800s he was began to put out poetry and then I think the latest one I saw was up to like the 60s it doesn't matter um, he was a 20th century figure literary figure and famous uh, and the thing about it is It just made me laugh because the thing that I know him for is a poem that, like, I learned of him in, uh, like, junior high school, high school English classes, but I'm not, like, a poetry person very much. I like lyrics and songs, but, you know, <laughs> those come with music. It's just are more palatable and... And I like writing. I am a writer myself, but poetry, like, it's not quite enough. Even though I understand that in some ways it can be huge, you know? But I, it's just not like my real lanes, but you know, I'm aware of it. So, Yates has this poem called Second Coming. And I, I just felt like a lot of synchronicities happening because Yates is in, uh, featured in the Stephen King novel, The Stand, when there's an army general having this, well, I mean, in context, it's not just a <laughs> terrible existential moment. I mean, that's almost making light of the situation, but um, it, it's like a really... <laughs> It's like a heavy, deep moment, and I'm cracking up. Um, and uh, he quotes a line from uh, the Yeats poem. So, <clears throat> uh, first I'm going to uh, read you the quote, the line that's... Oh, it's in my hand. Come <laughs> on, where's that? Uh, and so the line in that this general says in the stand is things fall apart the center cannot hold there's like a, a stanza I think it is before that and then several many more after that but he says it in this moment, and it's like he's talking to another character in the book. Gosh, I wish I, I think it's uh, Stu. Might be Stu. Might be someone else. It's a big book, long time. I read it a long time. It has been a long time since I've read it. So I, I'm, I'm like off. Or no, it's another. No, it's not Stu. Oh, God, that guy's... A, it's, a, it's another army guy, a subordinate. But um, he's, like, the last person that this general talks to before he dies. And it just really stuck with me that he said, I got this book of poetry from my daughter, and you can almost feel this... That's like, it's huge. Like, the guy is, like, a huge guy, even if he's not in stature a big guy. And then he gets this book of poetry, and you can just tell that, like... Imagine it's like Shaquille O'Neal with a book of poetry to be like like this, you know, like like him holding like this little bitty thing, this little bitty booklet, and and that's what I felt like, and I I felt like this guy was like, what am I gonna do with this? I'm a man, <laughs> but then he must have looked at it because. 
I guess life on the the bases is lonely. <clears throat> and so I guess he looked at the poetry and in this moment in the stand right before he dies, he quotes that line and from his perspective, it would be like, he even says words to this effect, but it would be like his ultimate responsibility to like, he was the center. He was at the center that needed to be held. And even though it was like, it ain't happening. It's already gone. <laughs> the moment has long passed. And you know, he's sitting in this room of basically just like foulness and destruction all, all around him. And, and not cause like there was a huge gun battle, but it was because of the disease that takes everybody out. Sorry if I'm spoiling it for anyone, but it, it has been on television in the books. I don't know, over 20 years old at least. So I, I, I doubt I'm spoiling much, but I, thought of the stand immediately when COVID started happening and I I didn't feel like things were going to happen the way it did in the stand but nobody in the stand thought what happened was going to happen either and King writes some pretty real believable characters and situations you know he's almost got that thing of the Simpsons where uh, he can like sort of predict the future, you know, and uh, he does have an understanding uh, obviously of like the supernatural world and how it just sticks little tendrils into us in the so-called real world and F's, F's, F's up. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so like for me that was a significant uh, synchronicity, but also the poem itself, Second Coming, now I'll read it. And so it goes, come on, turn, why is that there? Turning and turning in the whitening gyre, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The world, the blood dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack of all conviction while the worst are full of, sorry, the best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Okay, there is a lot of that, uh, characterization going around I can say in uh, American politics that that is definitely the case and it affects so many people it's, it's I can't disinclude it. it it makes so many things happen or not I can't disinclude it so Thinking of the people that do those jobs, the best lack all conviction. So I'm going to put best in air quotes because I think that's the tone there. And then in the next line, while the worst uh, are full of passionate intensity. And best and worst are almost indistinguishable in, in the government right now. Like even the, the ones that well they're the best by whose metric though and it, it party is irrelevant i think that applies to any of it could apply it does apply to either party could apply to any of them so moving on surely some resol surely some revelation is at hand surely the second coming is at hand the second coming hardly the words are out excuse me Hardly those words are out when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi, world spirit. Whoa, get out of here. No, I hit the X. Oh my gosh. I do not, I'm not a fan of the ads. I don't have to go all the way back. So sorry. 
Can we see the poem again? Is this even the one I had before? I don't even know. It's not. I have to find a different one. Okay, let's see if I can get back in there. Okay. The second coming. Hardly the words are out. When a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while all about it red, all about it real shadows of indignant desert birds. Wow, that's quite an imagery. Let me try that again. <laughs> A shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving slow thighs while all about in while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by rocking by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born wow okay <laughs> I never read that before in its entirety <laughs> the ending's a killer man seriously So there was some commentary. I didn't get this. I wonder if I can get that one back. I'm learning how to work your phone. <laughs> uh, nope. It's not there. Well, there was a sort of a summary of the poem. And um, for almost anyone, second coming means second coming of Jesus. And then there at the end was Bethlehem. But it it sort of talked about like the uh you know Joseph and Mary and the man and the baby in the manger in the stable or whatever narrative but it also talks about a beast slumping toward Bethlehem which I believe is where um the manger also is located <clears throat> and the Jesus and always there was an adversary for Jesus. So I think that's what the beast slumping towards Bethlehem to be born as well, because it's like the Joker and Batman. It's almost like the Joker doesn't even think he exists without Batman. Like, and everything else is unimportant. Like he still has, the Joker still has to, you know, play his trickster games and be, uh, what we would perceive as evil when somebody's life is cruelly yanked away. Um, <laughs> Jesus and his adversary. Different interactions. Not as fantastic or... Well, I mean, I was going to say not as fantastic and colorful, but when you get to the miracle stuff, it kind of is. I don't think... Well, anyway... <laughs> anyway um... The um, it, it's very the other video I made a lot of references to Catholic stuff uh, because they definitely make you behave the, the being raised in the Catholicism you get a certain baseline of information or a foundation and it builds upon itself it, it doesn't deviate from form that much although I have not been like a regular ch church goer since probably the 80s when my mom was still alive and or it wasn't even regular then <laughs> so I haven't even been in the regular one since then um I, I feel a, a, a many different ways about it like I feel like it's a, the religion itself the the, the the Catholicism I feel is uh, it's very constricting. There's a lot of, like, it applies guilt a lot. Um, it is full of mistruths and misunderstandings of truth and of what it's saying. Uh, it's a lot of s symbolism, so you have to know how that works. And I don't know how you 
do that without learning a bunch of stuff. <laughs> because you have to be able to know how to discern what the symbol means and you can't do that just flat straight with no underlying education like you need that foundation to inform you but it's also permeated culture forever because it was so insistent and so intrusive with the crusades and the knights and the history is not unknown and it just stuff just keeps coming up and people and the way they behave which was something that I was talking aloud to myself and not recording earlier but I, I, I don't know is it it can't just be me associating or, or relating to even uh, recognizing like all this Catholic stuff dogmatic kind of stuff because you know boy when they educate you <laughs> if they get you in their schools too, then you're doing some extra super church. <laughs> uh, they, they just really stuff you full of all kinds of information. And at least when I was small and I was getting mine, it was like pretty good because I left the Catholic schools in third grade and pretty much just cruised after that all the way out of high school. Like even, like they just gave me a technique uh, to learn and it was just easy and I don't know <clears throat> if it was just something I like caught on to caught on to or if that's what the their learning plan is meant to do either way I got a good education <clears throat> and so I'm, they're pervasive is what I'm saying like it doesn't matter really what religion you are here or anywhere else in the world a Muslim will, may know and be able to quote scripture better than like a, a person that I identifies as Catholic. It's not unknown, the whole Catholicism realm is what I'm saying. Like the Christianity, oh sorry, that's right. Christianity, because it's not just the Catholicism. <laughs> See? Anyway, um, it predicted a lot of this stuff. So, like in the Bible, that's happening right now with, um, what is the line? The vast, uh, oh, <laughs> if I'm gonna paraphrase, the best are actually the worst. <laughs> and the worst are like, doing what you would expect the best to be doing, like excelling and being best, but they're, you know what they're really good at? They A, tell you exactly what they're doing, and somehow people don't see that, and they B, are flim-flamming you and also hurting you at the same time. Um, but it's like, oh, I wonder if I, I got that one. I think I did pull this, yep. One of the cards I pulled was from the Jim Whispers deck, and I I tried to put this back, and it came back and said, no, this is one you have to talk about, and it is the Black Orloff Diamond, and the uh, subtitle is Misfortune. When the soul suffers too much, it develops a taste for misfortune. That sure sounds like addiction to me, and or even getting stuck in a rut, but when there's um i'm on the left let's put it that way i'm not a democrat i'm a former i i used to like be signed up as like i'm a democrat like that was my party now i want nothing to do with any parties but you have two choices <laughs> you can you can join another party and call yourself something else but you're not effective really you still you either end up voting for one of the two or your vote just goes into, I don't know, another dimension where hopefully it does something because they don't do much here. If you're not one of the two parties, you're just kind of cranking air. So, <clears throat> in my opinion. But, 
On the left, a lot they will say, lefties, uh, defining who the they is that I'm referring to, they will like make this judgment, basically, that the Republicans will vote against their own interests. And we've been saying it for so long, and I, I have thought and said it myself, except I, I have a different perspective about it that's, you know, grown over time, and that is that we don't know what their priorities are. We don't know what their interests are. Maybe they're just fine with the way things are going, and it makes it happy to, like, own the Dems. Because on the left, I understand that it seems like all they care about is, like, putting down people and demonizing, literally, the Dems or the left. So I understand that perception, but I moved out of it. And, well, I don't understand the other perception as well. I do grant that, you know, it's just because it's not what I would consider a priority doesn't mean that it can't be to somebody else and doesn't mean that it's wrong it's right for those people it's not right for the other people that think it's against someone don't vote for that same thing as we tell the people you know like that want to end abortions they're so worried about who's going to get them but it's like you know what you don't have to send your spouse or your loved ones or your daughters to have any. Like, you don't have to patronize those places. You could just stay out of it. Surely you have other things in your life that you could, like, do with your family along those lines or people that appreciate the sentiment and not, like, harass already stressed out, worried people that are going for medical care. Possibly not even an abortion. Like, you're not even open enough to differentiate between the people just going to see the dang doctor and that's I don't know unpalatable to me anyway <clears throat> um it's it's none of our bees <laughs> really so okay I said those things got that out there and the the last thing I want to say about the second coming thing is the reason why it appeals to me is because I'm all about, like, come on, let's ascend, like, it, <laughs> I, like, I feel that way, I'm not, like, sitting here going, come on, guys, let's ascend, but I will talk about, like, what, what I have and am going through, um, because <clears throat> it, it, it's not, like, a new ascension, it didn't start yesterday, but, it's kind of just been ongoing since I was, you know, aware of what was happening. And it wasn't the first time it had happened. So it's just ongoing. And I guess it peaks and plateaus and whatever as far as the intensity of the Kundalini style or Kundalini, Kundalini type awakening. <clears throat> but I'm all about like how do I like get there and not necessarily faster but what are the things that I need to do to get there and so mostly what I find is it's like deep mining of the self and <clears throat> you know unraveling and working out like why is this what makes this happen that is a wrong thing and why am I doing a wrong thing or why is I have why am I what I'm doing having a wrong thing effect on me my body or my life like whatever <clears throat> it's just kind of like this huge naval gazing expedition and then the other stuff you know is I don't know be you know love your neighbor <laughs> teach your children well don't steal stuff including people's spouses and you know, if someone has like a, a, a person, a, a, a snack, a, uh, you know, spouse, girlfriend, fiance, whatever it is, like, dang, you know, get, don't, don't be glomming onto other people's, those, those things. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be like this big thing. Like, it's pretty simple. It's pretty basic. Um, 
what, what I feel like we can expect from each other reasonably, that, you know, those particular suggestions are not the kind that, like, take people down and take them out and disempower and weaken and sabotage. Like, it's, you know, that's, I don't want, we, 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 we know how to do that really well. Like, we got it wired. I, I think we can move on to the next thing. Which is also, like, another feature of ascending. Like, you work through the dark stuff and the light stuff. And you sometimes have to, like, grovel down into that bottom of the, you know, the silt. But, um, that is survivable. In fact, when you shrug off all that sort of debris, you are able, you're light. <laughs> you can move more quickly and... Uh, you know, if you were thinking of rock or mountain climbing, the less you're carrying, the easier it is, right? <laughs> yeah, you like we talk about it all the time. Like you don't want to be dragging baggage around. It, you, you use any metaphor you want, but you want to lighten up so you can level up, basically. And it's unfortunate that the priority and thing that's been made important about leveling up seems to it doesn't seem to be able to for some people separate itself from like that capitalism mindset where having the more having the most money or things that are valuable and expensive and that people are swooning for and pining for like the not those things are not actually the, the important ones and, I mean, there's even a saying, you can't take it with you when you die. Like, are you really so attached to, like, your car or the money you earned your whole life that you got to try and, you know, make sure, like, nobody can have it but you? It's just, <laughs> I don't understand. Let me talk about some cards. <clears throat> I'm going to go in the order I pulled them. So I pulled two angel cards. You know, I'm just going to put the decks that I'm using up here and then I don't have to do a bunch of explaining. You can see them and then I'm talking ow, about which ones they are. Let me put that right way up. <laughs> All right. And then I'll give you a look at those at the end or something. Anyway, the two uh, angel number cards I pulled were, uh, oh, pardon me, 0808 Swift Action. In uh, tarot, the eight is uh, associated with strength. Also eight, when you turn it to the side, is the infinity number. Just throwing that out there. So the subtitle here is Swift Action, and the paragraph reads, You will enter a time of expansion, so begin taking steps toward achieving your ultimate objective immediately. Finances will miraculously improve. Oh, and somebody has their mind set on you. It is so hard not to sing that last bit. I just don't want to incur any fees. Any fees, dang it. <clears throat> I'm going to quickly read the keywords. How are we doing on time here? Ooh, I need to speed up. <sighs> Wealth, empathy, promises, commitment. Wealth is really, I mean, in the capitalist mindset, it means one thing. And you go after it with everything you got and you hold on to it like until after you're dead. <laughs> If you can. Um, I don't know how big a fan I am of that. I don't have dependents or money. So the situation is not one I'm going to run across. But I guess if I'm speculating, uh, speculation wise, I would say probably, you know, like maybe I'd leave like a nice little sweet something for dependents, but not like uh, the whole big pile just a little something to help them out for a year or two or longer if they're prudent and know how to even grow the gift 
like invested in some way, but really I would probably give most of my money to causes that don't get enough attention. Like that would probably seek those out and then give the majority of the money to that, those organizations. Because <clears throat> it's hard out there if you're a Nepo baby. And so even if you don't have a lot of money, I think it's a good idea to, you know, raise your children so that they are all constantly aware that what they do has consequences. And I just mean like making a mess and like the case for picking it up, you know, <laughs> it could be sanitary. It could be, you, there's no way to walk through here. Like whatever it is, I think I would just try as much as possible to make everything an object lesson just to make life easier to like endure and get through because I don't think we've been prepared uh, properly for that and it's kind of sad that a lot of us learn about these things as adults when it's <laughs> sort of would be more helpful to have given children this information and these gifts um so uh but wealth, you know, in a, in a spiritual parlance, you would want to say abundance because it covers, in my opinion, more than just like money and property and possessions. It would be like the knowledge, for example, of how to you not even confront like the events of your life, but learn more to like go have a more of a go with the flow than a confrontational attitude because confrontation to me it ends up more in the fear column which is the anger and you know the competition and the dirty dealing like it's all sort of low vibration and it's more open and freeing and actually giving and the giving returns when you have it in you to give away the last of whatever you have even though you could use it to someone that needs it more and then the, then you get unexpected returns that way and it's like clean not blood money in a way <laughs> so, um, promises commitment affection I think those three words go together because if you make a promise, I would hope that you commit to it so you don't disappoint the person, the promisee. Uh, and uh, generally, you give those with affection, which is another reason to, like, it, it helps, uh, not a reason, but, well, maybe so. It's like a motivation to ground the promise in commitment, like follow through and actually do it because you want to please the person you're giving the gift to, right? That's the purpose, right? I, I hope. Uh, inner strength. Um, well, I mean, that's like what I was saying. You give your children the gift of learning how to take things as they come and, you know, understand that sometimes, like, stuff just isn't going to go your way. And so accept that and then, you know, move on. But not only move on, but move on with the mindset that like it's not over there's still plenty of else to be gained going forward material or theoretical you know whatever like there's always something <clears throat> uh auspicious outcomes i mean you ultimately the what i'm saying is if you're not fighting things and not fighting progress even if it comes like slowly or doesn't feel like the best always something can be gained out of an experience and if you have that outlook then more opportunities are going to come to you i really believe that's true <clears throat> and the next card i pulled was 6666 great blessings um I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, paragraph first. Nurture yourself, your needs, desires, and boundaries. 
let go of things that are weighing you down. Well, I mean, you know, that would restrict your flow. So there's a good case to let go of the things that are weighing you down. And, you know, that's not just an easy thing to do. Like, people say, like, let it go, you know? Like, it, that is a process. You might not be able to let go of something because you're holding on to it for some reason. And if you want to, like, be able to let go of the baggage, then you have to, like, understand the reason you're holding on to it and see if it's even still reasonable to have the reason does the reason still make sense are you dragging stuff around and hurting yourself and I'll, by extension sometimes the people around you because you just can't let go of some past thing that it's never the opportunity is never going to arise again like you're just not going to be able to relive that moment you may have an opportunity to I try it again a different way, but that one time, that's, that is good. That ship has sailed. <laughs> you don't have to let that go. It left. <laughs> okay. Pardon. Puffer came back. Puffer came back. Puffer came back and Puffer came back. He likes his little song. Uh, okay, so nurture yourself your needs, desires, and boundaries. Let go of things that are weighing you down. Make space for something meaningful and expand your spirit to all areas of your life. That big love, opportunity, or job needs to squeeze in somewhere. That last bit, you know, I, I find myself sort of... Um, with blinders on sometimes and you can't see the whole picture that way uh and that's a good that's the case for expanding your horizons expanding uh on maybe maybe we don't always think that we have the capacity that we actually do like we think you know i da, 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 and then it only goes so far and it stops but that it doesn't have to be that way there's a lot of like rules and restrictions and uh, obstacles that will come across in life, but there's always options. Turn around, go over, go go through, go around. Like you know, there's options, and they're not always going to be good. But you got to just make the best of the situation that is life, <laughs> and that is like the easiest way to live it like if you just think always you know if things are just always going to go my way but your mindset about how they're going to get going your way it has to be expansive so that you know like what you're stepping on and what you're not like you know can i expand in this way and not intrude upon other stuff there's always something to keep your eye out for you know it sounds like a lot of work <laughs> doesn't it okay so these are the uh gem whispers cards that i pulled in the first one is this the first one i pulled no it is not <laughs> okay so the first one i pulled that i actually not now uh, I pulled it and I, I tried to put it back because I didn't I didn't like what it was saying, but I it came back. So, what do you need? You came in, let yourself back out. He always does this, and I have tried to pause this thing, and I'm not good at it. I've only been able to do it once. So I guess I'm going to take you with me. Because you know what? He wants me to open. Oh, no. I misinterpreted that. He was. He he has like a set of uh, behaviors. And he was acting like he wanted to go outside. And he always wants me to walk him to the door. It's like. But you walked in. <laughs> Why do you need an escort? But I just do it. So anyway, the 
the black Orloff diamond is the card that I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to pull that because look at the first thing is the misfortune subtitle. It's not, you know, like uplifting really, but you sometimes misfortune. There can be gold at the end of those rainbows. When the soul suffers too much, it develops a taste for misfortune. So that plays into kind of what I was saying about um, the people that don't choose their best interests. Like when you have that perception, this is the kind of thing that people are thinking. I, I feel like when they're trying to say, hey, you know, don't vote don't do things that are against your best interests, but people do. So like I said, like, it may be that, um, it's good, at, like, it doesn't matter if you're poor as hell and you can barely cover, like, all of your financial obligations. It maybe just feels good to know that this person, like the representative is saying the things I wish I could say in a way that more people are hearing and th there must be some deep feeling of like hurt and loss that drives this. And I would like to understand that better because the source that I'm thinking that it comes from, I'm like, what exactly are you suffering? Like you got all of the cards that win all of the games. The, you know, perceptions are, I don't know what they do for anyone but the perception haver, <laughs> really. But, you know, the way that you act uh, in connection with that, I guess, has some sort of meaning. Oh, I'm just reading these all backwards. Well, anyway, the real first one I pulled was Carnelian. Uh, and that subtitle is explore, like expand. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do by, than by the things that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away so you're not tied down, that's a bow line. Sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, explorer, dream discover so you never know when you just take off like without a plan you your your plan is not necessarily gonna go your way every time you really are not gonna know without a plan but that's what happens when you explore and you discover and then you know it's They'll shape your perceptions, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The next card I pulled was Tiger Eye, and the subtitle for this is Courage. Did I show the carnelian? I always think it looks like a Boston baked bean candy. Or some kind of Chinese ceramic, or... Sorry. Anyway, yeah, Tiger's Eye. And subtitle is Courage. Being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage. I guess that's that whole I would die for you thing or I'll do anything for my kids including commit crimes that you know you can read between the lines and then the next card I pulled was Lapis Lazuli open the only way to find true happiness is to risk being completely cut open well, I mean, that's the chance you take when you're exploring new ground, isn't it? And also, like, does a cut, a cut may bleed, but does it have to hurt you? I mean, I think we have a degree over that. We have some control over that to a degree. It really, I think, depends on the severity of the incision. And then this ended up, this was actually supposed to be the last card of those. Um, <clears throat> but they all kind of talk about like pitfalls but in like the context of like 
it could go either way or it's a good thing. And sometimes when a good thing is happening, an unfortunate thing can also make its way into the whole group effect and not, you know, damage the whole experience for everyone. If any of that babble made sense, <laughs> that last bit. <clears throat> and then um, I have some finally from the Miracles of, or Messages of Cosmic deck. And let me make sure I have these in the order. I don't really remember. Okay, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, so these I can just read. Speak up and speak out. Let your voice be heard loud and clear. <laughs> so if that's us, speaking out and being heard loud and clear. Boy, it's like you never spoke before. You're giving it your all there, but making a splash. That was the reason why I brought this over here because you're saying something and sometimes your words are explosive, percussive, and, you know, life-changing. If something like that hit us, hit our planet, it would be life-changing. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, never forget how resilient you are. You always bounce back. So pitfalls and misfortune can be returned away from. You can come back. You, you always bounce back. I think we do know that. Like, I mean, your bounces run out eventually. Excuse me. But you get to come back many times. Open your heart, not just a little, all the way and let love flow in. It is hard for us to do the love. <laughs> we can't even love, we have, like, we are stingy with loving ourselves. And what is that about? If no one else is going to do it, why can we not do it? There's a lot of rules and a lot of pressure in our lives, and we give it to each other. And I feel like. It's unnecessary a lot of times that it's there and given and that it's unnecessary for us to react and accept it. Like, you know, we can also just, you know, let it go over our backs, you know, like water over a duck's back. Like, it does, like, uh, <clears throat> I made a, a comment in a comment section, risky business there as always, like, gosh, you can't say hardly anything anymore. But I generally, actually, I don't get into, like, arguments with people. Like, I see people on Twitter, like, ah, everyone there is terrible. But it's like, yeah, but you're, th the, these people are news people, though. They do, new, they talk about news, they do news shows, or they do opinion, really. It's not network, so. But anyway, they're like out there and they're putting stuff out there and then they go on the site and put the things up and then the people <sighs> respond and it's not, you know, always nice. <laughs> and then they complain about it, but it's like, yeah, but you know, if you don't like it, leave. You're there. You are contributing to it yourself. It's like... I don't have that experience, but I don't, I'm not them. I'm not saying and doing what they're doing. <laughs> so, um, they, I would say they're not letting the love in. No one's even trying. Like everyone's just trying to score on each other or they have been scored upon and they're trying to retaliate. And that does not, you know, lighten the mood or fix the atmosphere. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think there's a level of obliqueness involved when talking about these situations and places. I, I have had a number of people, uh, usually like uh, males that talk to me about this. I don't know why women don't. It's fine, I don't really want to have the conversations with anyone, but a couple of males have come to me with sort of like relationship 
problems or questions and I don't know why they're asking me because I don't really have those <laughs> so I don't know but I just do my best to answer so it's always like this why doesn't it work out ever with the women and then I say well what's the problem and they'll describe it and they'll tell me all these stories and I'll go yeah there's a common denominator here and I'm not assigning blame like right now or when I'm having these conversations but I am pointing out so yes this happened and you feel this way and but you know what did they feel like and then they'll be like well wait I don't know well why didn't you ask because of the, whatever the feelings were they led to this confrontation but also what is the common denominator in all of these stories and they're like ah oh, they did this and she blah 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 and I'm like nope 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 that ain't it it's not anything about anybody else and <laughs> they'll be like well what and I'm like you are the common denominator you are also in all of these stories that you're telling me but I'm not hearing what you're doing to contribute to it being a bad thing and then they're just like oh <laughs> like they don't even think of that um and then they also sometimes do not like hearing that they are <laughs> actually maybe the problem or part of the problem but i mean you're not in a relationship by yourself you are dealing with a whole other person and they got as much going on as you and so if you're having trouble understanding their side of it maybe listen to what it is or that there is one understand that it would be helpful i think in would have been in these uh, conversations I don't know if it changed any minds to hear that but it seems like it seemed pretty obvious that to me that could be because I've heard that so many times <laughs> like everybody's got the same problem it's partially you like the reason why there's still a problem is because you're not doing the part where you are acknowledging your part Okay, I just went into a huge rant. What the hell was I even talking about? Oh, being able to let the love in. So yes, you let it in by uh, being self-aware. And that, one hopes, would make you more compassionate and empathetic to the other person in the discussion. Because if that's if you really want it to work, then you, you got to like... <laughs> I hate to say sacrifice, because it really isn't. But you got to sacrifice, I guess, your own hurt feelings but you're just facing yourself and I know that is the hardest person to face because we're the most honest and maybe even cruel to ourselves than anybody else but nevertheless like even that is something to consider about how does it make you act with other people when you're feeling this way all messed up on the inside and kind of against yourself um and it's it seems so hard but it's like just give yourself a little love like acknowledge that you deserve it and when you're able to like treat yourself well then you can see the way to treating your partner well okay that i'm done talking about that find ways <laughs> to lighten up immediately let's talk about something else <laughs> and not take everything so seriously uh, <laughs> look would we have to wear a space suit in our own habitat just to be in our own world is it that hard out there right, right now like is it really that heavy seriously lighten up I love how the uh, laptop and I'm not sure what's behind it. I, I, w I would say it's the keyboard, but it seems like the laptop has the keyboard attached. But anyway, in front of the figure on here, you can see that they've got a laptop sort of uh, projected onto their pillow. And then right behind it, there's this other projected, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, um that's certainly making light of it you know like it's very cartoon 
I, I did have to laugh at the uh, space suit or under the old timey undersea suit. I don't know what's going on with that, but it seemed like you're in your own house and you're wearing a hazmat suit. Like, what are you, like, what are you fending off? And we were just talking about love. It, like, I always say, love is the hardest thing for us to do. Like, guns are not harder. Race is not harder being able to love each other and, and even ourselves is so hard <laughs> like we just we'll sit there and tear ourselves up and down and we can't take a moment to just be nice like you can't find one little thing nice to say to yourself forget talking to other people they, but we've all seen how that goes because everybody's got a phone with a camera on it and we're just like we have this bounty of how not to act. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you do need a, a suit to associate with people, but when you're toxic to yourself at home, you really gotta look for ways to lighten up. Um, okay, and the final card is, let me go on time here, damn it! <laughs> Live your life with both feet in. Commit to being fully here. Gotta stop giving a shit and just jump in. Quit worrying about who's looking and who's saying. Ultimately, that kind of stuff is just gonna hold you back because what we're meant to do is what we're, what we feel like we should be doing, what we feel like is right for us in the situation. And we're not supposed to be taking into account other people's suggestions and opinions to the point that they're impeding us from doing what we're supposed to do. Whatever we're doing, if we feel if it's we if we feel like it's right or wrong, or even an observer thinks it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter either way. It's the right thing to do. If you're doing the so-called wrong thing, it's still the right thing to do. You're just meant to do it wrong for whatever reason to learn something from it so that you can turn around in the next case and do the thing right okay done talking now thank you and good night one thank you and good night oh gotta turn it off bye